Shybro, Father James with Father Hank. Hey. We're actually on the road for this podcast on in the road again. Woodstock, Illinois. We are at the Corrier Zoo House. And I owe Father Hank credit for this, for this great find, introducing me to this place. Uh, Father Irvin Caliente, shout out to him. He's a priest of the Diocese of Rockford. Kind of a long story. Maybe we'll do another podcast on this place. But anyways, we're looking out. We're, we're staying at a house that's dedicated for, for priests. It's kind of like a priest getaway. And uh, we're looking out at a beautiful little lake, pond. Pond, pondish, lakeish. And beautiful tree lines. It's October. The colors are starting to change. By the way, if you know of anyone that has a house in the woods or on the <laughs> lake that you're willing to give away, or they were willing to give away for the priests uh, for Shybro, that would be pretty awesome, a little getaway house. Anywho, we want to reflect on two incredible female saints who are have their feast days in the middle of October. Saint Teresa of Avila and St. Margaret Mary of Alaco. 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 I think. Alacoque. French is yeah. Alacoque. Yeah. Yeah. It's French. Teresa of Avila, Margaret Mary, powerhouses right there. Mm-hmm. Spanish, French, medieval slash early Renaissance, October 15th and 16th, correct? Uh, 16th Today, Thursday, 17th. October 16th, 17th. Uh, yeah, 15th and 16th. 15th and 16th. So, where do you want to start? I could say something but do you have any uh particular maybe just a highlight of centuries of avila really gives us this wonderful in depth of this spiritual life but with a f- emphasis on the interior life of like getting to know your soul and christ's presence in your soul and saint margaret mary of alcoque um, gives us this uh, huge devotion to the sacred heart of jesus and not just like the image of our lord's heart but getting to know our Lord's heart as you would someone else. That's just, I'm going to preface Very it. good. Yeah. So Margaret Mary is obviously affiliated with the Sacred Heart, those revelations. She wasn't the first woman to True. receive revelations of the Sacred Heart. St. Gertrude? St. Gertrude. The great or something. Yeah, there was, uh, I think, a few others even as well. But it really, which is, to me, it was cool. Uh, history at the time of Jansenism, when Christ was really becoming distant from the people and people were more focused on, on kind of God's severity and judgment. Yeah. Penance. Being impersonal. Jesus, kind of, he, I think he sees the faith slipping away. And so he peers to Margaret Mary and kind of refocuses the people on his sacred heart. Yeah. And the mercy of his sacred heart. Yeah. Yeah. So that great image, uh, in fact, at this house here, there's a bunch of statues a of lot. the sacred heart. Yeah. So, uh, he's pointing to his heart, which is usually wrapped in thorns and maybe mm-hmm. some fire blazing from it. And the pierced wound at, from whence, you know, the mercy comes and um, blood and water. And then Teresa of Avila, the, the Carmelite, awesome, awesome story as well. Uh, she is a doctor of the church. Mm-hmm. Her three classic texts, I guess you could say, are her her autobiography. Yeah. The Way of Perfection, yeah. and The Interior Castle. Yeah. Uh, and Teresa of Avila, you mentioned her, just her interior life, but I love her too because she combines the Martha and Mary of just the contemplative mystic, but also active. I mean, she went reforming with St. John of the Cross, the Carmelite Order, traveling around the Spanish countryside, uh, establishing convents uh, she was a great administrator she was she was a leader uh, so she had all these gifts she she was known as just a dynamic personality very charismatic so you could just see her and be like oh there she is busy at work doing mm-hmm. all this stuff but then she had this incredible incredible interior life this these mystical experiences of god there's that great statue in in rome of her um her ecstasy, St. Teresa of Avila in ecstasy, where the angel is piercing her heart in, in deep prayer. So really, really kind of a cool, cool woman to, to pray with, especially if we, if we lean or we, sh- we kind of fall on one extreme or the other. We're just pure contemplatives and kind of have our head in the clouds or <laughs> we have no prayer life at all. All we do is just work. 
Teresa of Alva is someone that we can pray with that give us that good balance. What else about Avila or, um, or St. Margaret Mary? Margaret Mary. There's something that from St. Margaret Mary of giving us that contemplation of to focus on the sacred heart of Jesus and all of its symbolism. Um, I actually like to bring up in confession of just how in that sacrament we enter into that, that wound in the sacred heart of Jesus. It's from that wound where his precious blood is being poured out upon the penitent, um, his healing grace, um, salvation, and mercy. Um, and it's just, it's a very intimate moment of confession where I feel like in, in my short time of hearing confessions, um, there's just this moment where the Lord kind of opens, allows the priest to open up the door or he opens up the door of the penitent's heart and the priest is allowed to walk in there. And what the priest brings is all that healing mercy, that tenderness, that meekness of our Lord to strengthen the penitent, um, to kind of do away with any janseness, you know, maybe tendencies that we have lurking, um, but to just give that peace. I like that. Person. I like that with the heart and the woundedness. Um, you know, I was just reading a book that talks about vulnerability and the need to be vulnerable with God and also with one another, whether it's in marriage or priestly relationships, whatever. Um, vulnerability comes from the Latin vulnus, which means wound. And so when we're vulnerable, we open ourselves up to being wounded, but we also are kind of sharing our wounds. And that's something uh, you, you met when you were describing earlier too, uh, not just in confession, but the heart of that's pierced, right? Mm -hmm. There's that sense of, of the wound of Christ, all right? And he then, when we're vulnerable with him, he shares in our wounds, in our woundedness, and our, our wound is, uh, becomes a point of grace and actually a point of deeper contact with, with God in union with him. And I think something that St. Teresa of Avila discovered in her prayer life of going deep into your soul in prayer with God is allowing God to share in your vulnerableness to expose those things to God. And some of those things in our soul that's held there are things that we don't articulate to people on a normal day or like deep conversations or maybe even something that's hard to bring up with your spouse. It's the parts in our soul and our personality or our history that are vulnerable, tender, and um, sometimes we can feel ashamed of them. We think of them as a weakness. But as you allow that to be a conversation in your prayer life to God, we're imitating St. Teresa's plunge into the depth of your soul and allowing Christ to reign there. Very good. So maybe St. Teresa of Avila and St. Margaret Mary can, can pray for our own ability to be vulnerable before God and one another and ultimately grow in holiness and, and be saints like they are. God bless. Peace.